they're inseparable. It's always about the right dress on the right woman at the right time. Like the, the dress that Halle Berry wore when she won the Academy Award by Ali Saab, the very sheer with the embroidery, the burgundy. That dress looked amazing on that particular woman because the boyish haircut against the romance of the skirt, the coffee-colored skin against the deep burgundy. On another actress, I don't know if that would have had that kind of impact. What happens is a woman puts on that dress and magic happens. And that's what makes it unforgettable. Otherwise, it's just a pretty dress. She was Hugh Grant's arm candy. I mean, a beautiful woman, an incredibly smart woman, wonderful to talk to, pleasure. But she stepped out of the car that night at the premiere of Four Weddings and a Funeral. Nobody wanted to know about the movie the next morning. But what everybody was asking was, who was that girl? And what about that dress? Once again, you have this woman who's very intelligent, who has an incredibly sexy body, and you see this dress that seems to be held up by a wish and a promise, whereas it's actually brilliant architecture. The safety pins are actually like vestigial, they really don't keep the dress up. It's the combination of a great dressmaker at work, a great moment, and a really sensational woman to wear it. I will say that uh, at this year's Academy Awards, I think Gwyneth Paltrow and Tom Ford was sensational. Because once again, it was a dress that caught somebody at their particular best. It, Tom took into account Gwyneth's stature, that patrician beauty that she has, the carriage and sophistication, and it was an incredible mix. I think it did several things. I think number one, I think the most important thing the gown did was that it reawakened everybody's fascination and sort of romanticism in the royal family. I mean, that family's a bit of a mess, you know, everyone but her. And she sort of wiped away all the, all the sludge. Plus they seem, you know, really happy and a great couple. That's one. Two, the precision and the unbelievable quality of the detail work in the lace, which not everybody can see in that dress that Sarah Burton crafted. What's so, so amazing about that gown is that it's a combination of incredible modernity because it's sleek and it looks really simple, and yet it has an extraordinary detail, which I think says so much about the way fashion is today right now. It really is about detail work. It really is about craftsmanship. It's not about something being big and overly ornate and florid. There's so many. Rafe Simmons, Nicolas Gasquier, a lot of young American designers, Alexander Wang, Jason Wu, Prabal Guring. The economic downturn made everybody kind of wake up because you didn't know what would get. You didn't assume that everybody would, get, would, would come into the store anymore, and consequently, people started taking chances again. And I think when fashion takes chances, fashion comes alive. You know, I think that the two designers who took over Valentino, Pia Paolo and Maria Grazia, I think are doing a sensational job. And then you have someone like Karl Lagerfeld at Chanel who is blazing in his late 70s. That's extraordinary. The two probably that fascinate me the most, one is Kate Blanchett, because I think she has a very distinctive a kind of regal beauty. She's willing to take a risk and take a chance. On one hand, I think she's very beautiful, but she's not that definition of Ava Gardner, Rita Hayworth beautiful that Hollywood promoted for so long. And then the other one is Tilda Swinton, because she looks like nobody else in the world, because she dresses like nobody else in the world. The level of confidence, guts, and sheer bravado that she has when she gets dressed, she just, she wipes me out. A couple of things. One, dress from the inside out rather than the outside in. Okay? It's great that a dress looks amazing, but it's really more important that a dress feels amazing. If a dress feels amazing, you will look amazing. That's number one. Two, don't necessarily look for flash and beads to do the work for you. Don't let the dress overpower you. Don't run to black because it's safe, because safe never stands out, and I don't understand why you're knocking your brains to get dressed up to fade into the background. If you are gonna buy black, then that dress should be something extraordinary in terms of its construction, its silhouette, its shape, or its architecture. And the other thing is, two things. Find a color. Find a color that just raises you up. And the second thing is, the dress has to fit like molten glass. I don't care what designer you buy, it has to fit like perfection. I think more important is that InStyle doesn't love fashion as much as it loves women. 
It loves its reader. It loves that woman who picks up the magazine. We talk directly to her. We're not talking to the people sitting next to us in the front row. We're not talking to retailers. We care about her. I want, I want a woman to read this magazine, and when she's done, her impulse should be, I want to go shopping. Every woman has the right to feel good about herself. It's not about how tall you are, or whose shoulders you don't have, or whose lips you don't have, or whether you're two or six or 10. None of those things really matter if you feel good about yourself. <laughs> New York and LA are not the only stylish cities in America. There are women with great taste and great desire and, and healthy pocketbooks in Chicago and Troy, Michigan and Austin, Texas and Salt Lake City in Lexington, Kentucky and in West Palm Beach. And we have always made it our business to speak to American women rather than just to speak to women on both coasts.